Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Zimbabwe uh, uh, Lithium PLC Investor Presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged and can be submitted at any time using the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Please just simply type in your question at any time and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company will review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it's appropriate to do so. Before we begin, we would like to submit the following poll, and if you would give that your kind attention, I'm sure the company would be most grateful. And I'd now like to hand over to Anton Duplessis, CEO from Zimbabwe Lithium. Good morning. Good morning, and thanks very much for, for hosting this webinar. A uh, great opportunity to, uh, to speak to our investors. Um, we've prepared a, a short uh, investor presentation which um, has gone live on our website as well so that's that's available for download there and I'll, I'll run through that um, I won't slavishly go through through every page but but hopefully that will give a good overview of the project so uh, just to start that process our standard disclaimer at the beginning I won't go through that um, but then just a, a quick overview of the project um, so we're a name listed uh, resources company and we are developing our 100% owns involved lithium project which is uh, in Germany. This is a, an asset that we acquired in a series of transactions over the last 14 or 15 months. And as I say, we now own 100% and have full control of the asset. And it's the, the primary asset within the, within the business. We believe it's an, in, uh, an attractive project. Its uh, aim is to be an integrated project. So it'll produce all the way to battery grade lithium um, products. Um, it's a large resource between the core mining license, the Zinvold license, and um, uh, our satellite exploration licenses, some of which have had um, some drill work on them. We have over 1 million tonnes lithium carbonate equivalent uh, um, uh, uh, contained, uh, which makes us certainly one of the larger projects uh, in Europe. Um, and then I mentioned the exploration uh, licenses. We uh, we believe that there's good potential resource upside from those, and um, I'll get into a little uh, what we what we're doing with those further on in the, in the presentation. Um, the other thing to note is that um, the project, as designed, uh, has the potential to produce some pretty attractive byproducts. Uh, amongst those is potassium sulfate, which is a, a key fertilizer uh, component. The project itself is located um, just 35 kilometers from Dresden in the former East Germany. So it's really in the heart of the European chemical and automotive industries, um, which is which is essential. Uh, it's also an established mining district. So mining has been uh, occurring in this area for, for over 400 years. And that um, is quite important in terms of uh, local acceptability and also availability of, um, of, of skilled labor. The backdrop of, of lithium demand, I think everyone uh, who, who follows us or follows the sector at all knows that um, the switch to electric vehicles is the real key driver behind this. That seems to be gaining momentum and certainly, especially within, the, within Europe, there's very strong government support uh, and conviction to, to, to have that change. And we're now seeing um, the big uh, European automakers getting behind this and, and actually starting to expend serious money on, on switching to, to EVs. And that's driving lithium demand at, um, at a very high, high rate. And that's then impacting lithium pricing, which um, certainly on the spot pricing side, we've seen you know, you know, a, a sort of fourfold increase in lithium pricing just in the last year. And then finally, just on, on, on this page, uh, we believe we bring, you know, an experienced board with, with, a, with a good and deep set of skills, both, um, you know, on the technical side as well as on the financing side, uh, as well as a team on the ground in Germany to, to get the project uh, uh, going. Uh, just on this next page, uh, uh, ESG, Environmental, Social and Governance, this is core to, to what we do and, and the whole philosophy of the company. Um, at, at base, uh, lithium is a, is a, is a key, in, and lithium ion batteries are a key enabling technology for the energy transition. Um, storage is going to be absolutely key. I'll get into that a little, a little bit later. But um, so, you know, in terms of what governments and people want to do in terms of lowering carbon emissions, lithium will be an essential part of that as it makes its way into batteries. Um, specifically on the project and, and uh, Efficiency, uh, the idea is that, that this will be an integrated project, so we're minimizing transport and associated emissions. 
it's a small footprint underground mine. So again, uh, trying to limit the impact on, on the environment. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, sort of byproducts and, and side streams are, are relatively benign, which is, uh, which is excellent as well. From a social perspective, uh, as mentioned, this is an established mining area. There's been mining there for, for over 400 years that goes um, uh, a long way to, to improving social acceptability, and that's very important to us. Uh, there's also uh, a lot of um, brownfield infrastructure and skilled labor in the area, which helps as well. And then finally, um, from a governance perspective, we are UK listed we, um, with all of the um, levels of transparency and corporate governance that, that, that comes with that. Um, we, we, we're adhering to the QCA corporate governance code and uh, we've established board level sustainability uh, uh, committees. In terms of the market, there's a, a lot of commentary at the moment, um, and it's 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 fairly ubiquitous and, 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 and universal in the sense of um, you know there are not a lot of naysayers to to a very exciting outlook for demand for for lithium. Um, so it is established as the battery technology at at the moment, um, and certainly there there are a number of um, you know credible commentators uh, it's suggesting that demand will grow at you know, an average rates well above twenty uh, percent, and you see, you know, there's some out there saying a CAGR of, of of over you know around twenty eight percent for the foreseeable years, and demand really can't keep up. Um, the time scale to bring mines, new mines online, is 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 long and challenging. Uh, any of you who who are existing mining investors will will know that. Um, and that's resulting in, in in a substantial projected shortfall uh, in in supply over the next few years. We, ex we anticipate that that will really start to to hit and be apparent. It's already apparent in the market, but will really become apparent in the market um, from the middle of the decade. Um, then, uh, in terms of you know the the, the, the nature of of, of uh, lithium demand and the specific uh, lithium products. Um, that are in demand, and we're seeing a shift towards, certainly in Europe, a shift towards lithium hydroxide, and that informs some of the technical decisions we've made, which we'll get onto uh, uh, in, in, in just a little bit. Uh, this page, I don't think we need to, to weigh on, but really, you know, the, the, the point of this is Europe is itself is, is becoming a very core area of demand, uh, particularly for EVs. Uh, it's one of the one of the core regions in the world. The trend was was. Um, likely started in in uh, Asia but 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 Europe really has stepped up to to the plate on this uh, EU's designated um, and this has been key to to the economic development uh, over the next few years and has added um, you know lithium to its list of critical materials so also again a, a realization that there needs to be some some local supply and that's that's a little bit covered on on this page um, I think what, what what's key to note is you know everything I've, I've just said about demand for 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 batteries and therefore lithium uh, in Europe is is absolutely key. But there are no current uh, lithium producing assets uh, in Europe, um, and and there are relatively few projects uh, waiting in the wings to do that. Um, in terms of our location, um, with this little um, red star over here on this map on the right, and around us you can see. Um, all of the planned and existing battery factories and associated um, uh, fabs um, for the industry. So we, we're right in the heart of that uh, in Germany. And as you can see from this chart on the bottom left here, Germany is, is projected to be you know, one of the core areas of, of demand growth for, for batteries and therefore battery factories and therefore, and therefore lithium. So we, we're ideally located in, in that sense uh, and for that. Uh, this is just a comparison of us against um, some of the other projects, uh, hard rock lithium projects in, in, in Europe. So it excludes the, the Brian projects. Um, uh, you know, as you can see, we're one of the larger resources and, and the resource number there is for our core uh, Zinvolt lithium license. It, it, it excludes our um, exploration properties, which we believe have, have good potential to, to increase that. So certainly relative to some of the other players out there, we have, we have a large resource. Um, we're also for, on a great perspective, uh, relatively well positioned, especially against um, you know, some of the other Zinvoldite deposits. So that would be uh, Cinevec and, and uh, Trillivore.
then this is zooming in, in on, on where we are and what the project is. So um, a relatively small footprint underground mine. Uh, the intention is to um, have a fully integrated project um, all within the immediate area. So minimizing transport to the, ex to the extent possible, uh, producing battery grade products. So um, we recently con concluded our uh, lithium hydroxide test work. Um, so we've proven that we can uh, viably and economically produce lithium hydroxide. And as I said before, that's emerging as um, you know, a key product for the, uh, for the European market um, used in, in, in battery uh, chemistries and technologies that are behind uh, what a lot of the European automakers are doing. So that, that, that's a core focus for us. But we have demonstrated that the project is quite flexible. We could also produce lithium carbonate or, or lithium fluoride if, if we wanted to. So it's essentially um, uh, an economic uh, decision for us. Um, we also produce, we also will produce, I should say, um, valuable by, byproducts, a high purity SOP. So that's potassium sulfate, um, a core uh, fertilizer uh, component. And, um, you know, also in the current market, you know, the, the sort of strength of having local supply of, of these kinds of things is, is, is coming to the fore as we look at, you know, traditionally where those products come from, Russia, Ukraine, uh, countries like that, where supply has been uh, disrupted. Um, core mining license valid until 2047. So we have a mining license in place. Um, mine life uh, uh, around 30 years, um, depending on, 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 on production levels that we sustain. And then in the area, we've got um, yeah, yeah, a, a number of uh, exploration licenses. Um, just on, on the map on the right, you can see where the project is on the Czech-German border. We're on the German side. If you're familiar with the Cinevec project that sits within EMH, we are, in fact, the German end of that same uh, overall ore body. So it's, um, it's, it's really a contiguous ore body there. And in fact, in that picture on the, on the right, you can see me in the historical underground mine at the, at the border, which is, which is underground. Um, this is just a, a slightly more detailed map of the area and shows our, um, our main license here. It's this uh, area in red. Um, so that's where we have the mining license up to 2047. And then these sort of, um, sort of bluey green areas are our, our exploration licenses that we hold. So the Altenberg license here, which um, you know, means when we ultimately start to look at the step out from, from the core license, we, we have that ground. Uh, and then Falkenhayn uh, and Zadersdorf, um, you know, both within uh, 11 or 12 kilometers. Falkenhayn is more like um, you know, five or six kilometers from the core license, and then Zadersdorf is, uh, is 11 or 12. So very much in the local region, um, and we will do work to determine whether um, those licenses can uh, contribute to the overall project and, and enhance the scale. Um, in terms of uh, existing infrastructure in the area, as I mentioned, um, this, this was a mining area. It was mined for tin, heavily for tin tungsten um, uh, in, in up to the, to the, the early 90s. And so there's you know, a fair amount of old infrastructure in, in the area, in addition to other infrastructure like railway lines, roads, power and, 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 and water. This is just our uh, resource statement and also um, uh, the historic uh, Jork resource that was on uh, the Zadersdorf uh, exploration license. Um, but I don't think we need to go through through that. Uh, then, then on here, just it, kind of some of the advantages we see from a sustainability perspective, um, you know, being near to the to the end market is is extremely important, not only um, because you, you're minimizing cost and, and, and transport and you're minimizing the associated uh, CO2 emissions with that. But when you compare it to, you know, to other supply lines that are, you know, where the product is coming from, from South America or Australia via China, um, you know, as, as we enter a world where, you know, tighter, more easily controlled supply lines become more important, you know, as we've seen global disruption from, you know, things like the, the, the pandemic and, and, and other disruptions, I think the, the ability to, to be a local supplier in an important market is, is going to become critically, uh, critically and more important. Um, small physical footprint, as I mentioned, un, uh, you know, a small underground mine, uh, the ability to, to utilize, um, uh, you know, potentially the ability to, to, to utilize existing infrastructure, which would you know, further limit disruption. Our process is, is, uh, is not water intensive relative to some of the others. So the brine 
projects all you know but by their nature you use a lot of water which which has environmental implications um uh, but our process itself is is not very water intensive so it's a dry magnetic separation um and and uh, and doesn't doesn't uh, uh, you know, utilize too too much water. Uh, energy intensity, um, you know, uh, obviously the, the the brines benefit from from solar, uh, uh, whereas whereas we don't. Um, but relative to to other hard rocks, um, you know, like spodumenes, we use a lower energy uh, process um, than them. And then finally, in terms of the actual technology here, and this is important. Um, uh, you know, our, our technology is, is is pretty conventional. I mean, all the steps of the process to uh, in the flow sheet are um, uh, processes that are that are used in in, in other uh, mining operations elsewhere. So, um, you know, nothing nothing individually is unique uh, to our process. Uh, finally, what 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 is our strategy? So we want to be an important battery grade uh, lithium hydroxide supplier. So we focused on, on lithium hydroxide and we want to, and we want to supply the European battery sector. Um, we're also looking at um, how we can in, increase uh, the production potential, both from the uh, Zinvolt license area and then further work that we need to do on, on the exploration licenses to see whether those can um, uh, add, add to the project. So that's, that's a core area of our, of our strategy. Um, as I mentioned, focus on lithium hydroxide um, ahead of other more niche products, although we do have the flexibility to, to produce those. Uh, and then it's all about, you know, how from that point on, it's all about how we can optimize uh, the project. So this is looking at all the ways we can uh, enhance it, improve efficiencies, cut cost, um, and so on. Um, and then maximizing revenue from, from potential byproducts. So uh, SOP, we've we've proven in our uh, test work uh, to this point, we can we can produce a very high quality or very high purity SOP. Uh, tin uh, is also present in in the ore. It hasn't historically been looked at in, in in a lot of detail, but that is that is an area that that we want to look at. I mean, tin pricing obviously at the moment is is very favourable, and therefore uh, it, it makes sense for us to look at that. And then, you know, in the, in the near to medium term, uh, we'll continue to look at flow sheet optimi optimization. We're doing infill drilling uh, to help refine our, our mine planning. Uh, we will advance work uh, on the exploration licenses. And then, um, you know, it's value engineering and optimization, as I mentioned before. Alongside that, we're, we're looking to negotiate access to some of the legacy infrastructure to the extent it makes sense. Uh, and then we will uh, look to advance discussions with, with potential off-takers as well as uh, finance providers. Um, so that, that uh, is, is really kind of what I wanted to go through on the, on the, on the, the base presentation, uh, just to leave you with um, kind of what we see as sort of the, the investment case. So we're an integrated lithium project. We're really in the heart of um, both the automotive and the chemical industry, and that's important in terms of access to to you know, um, both skilled uh, personnel as well as uh, actually access to to certain key suppliers of, of materials we need for for the process. Uh, we've got a meaningful resource position, and uh, in addition to that, we have got some pretty interesting looking uh, expansion potential there. Um, so that could make us certainly one of the, the larger projects uh, potentially in, in, in Europe. And then um, we're, we're pushing on towards construction uh, as, as quickly as we can. Um, fundamentals of the market couldn't be stronger. We've seen pricing run up massively over the last year, and there are not a lot of commenters suggesting that that's going to reverse uh, in the near or even longer term. Uh, and then we've got a good team in place. The, the, the board has a lot of experience across the necessary functional areas, uh, finance, uh, and and on the technical side, uh, both mining um, and uh, and on the lithium industry, um, and we think we can pull it together. Um, thanks very much. I think that 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 concludes uh, the presentation as I wanted to go through it. 
happy to to look at and answer questions that's great anton thank you so much for your presentation this morning ladies and gentlemen please do continue to submit your questions using the q a tab situated on the right hand corner of your screen just why anton takes a few moments to review those questions submitted already i'd like to remind you that recording this presentation along with a copy of the slides and the published q a can be accessed via your investor meet company dashboard um anton you'll probably note that uh, we received a number of uh, questions from investors throughout today's call but we also have a number that we received ahead. So perhaps if I may, I could start off with these pre-submitted questions and, and thank you uh, once again to everybody that's uh, shown engagement today and, and before the event in their questions. So the first question reads as follows, when do you expect the first shipment of product to be delivered to a client? Um, so our, our expectation is that demand in, in Europe will, will really begin to uh, show a massive ramp up, really starting now, but it will, it will really reach an period of intensity in, in the middle of the decade. And we would hope to try and match our production to that. So we are, we would aim for for the middle of the decade or as close to that as, 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 as we can get. There are obviously some factors which are outside of our full control um, that will impact that timing, you know, namely uh, permitting and, and, and financing. But, um, you know, the aim is, is, as I say, is the aim is for the, for the middle of the decade for production. Thanks, Anton. Um, turning to the next question, what is being done to encourage localization of supply in Europe? So uh, in, it's, it's been, I'd say it's been slow to date, but you've seen the EU try and get behind this. So one of the things they've done is designate um, uh, lithium as uh, an, an element that's on their list of, of, of critical raw materials. So they're very anxious to to have a local source of, 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 of supply that has yet to turn into sort of fundamental uh, support in terms of, of, of funding, et cetera. But you have seen uh, the, the start of that. So in fact, the EU did vote, um, I think it was about three and a half billion euros to um, uh, try and give the, the battery uh, manufacturing uh, side of the industry uh, a boost in, in Europe. So you've seen a lot of that money flow into into the battery manufacturers and it, and it should you know ultimately as they start to focus on where they're going to get their raw materials from there should be some trickle down from that but, but effectively what they've done is they've stimulated the battery sector significantly that will then pull through into into all the areas that that sort of feed into that uh, that sector thanks very much indeed um if i may turn to the next question around uh, off takers have you had any preliminary discussions with any potential off takers and who could they potentially be look we can't really talk um about you know specifically about um about any individual uh, conversations we we would have those would those would typically be under under an nda we we are speaking to a range of people um, I mean, unlike uh, you know some some others in the sector who've rushed to sign up um, offtake uh, agreements very early on in their project lives, and to my mind, thereby give up a lot of optionality. We've been quite cautious about how we how we approach that, um, you know, such that you know ultimately when we do sign offtake, it will be with with the right partner who's who's willing to to support us. So those conversations are ongoing, but but um, uh, you know that's I think that's all I can say on that at, at, at this point. No, thank you very much indeed. Um, what's your relationship like with the local or regional authorities in Germany? Um, I think it's 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 good. Um, we're we're endeavouring to to deepen that. The um, sort of core project team has been largely unchanged for um, you know since the inception of this project. So there is a team on the ground in Germany uh, who have relationships with um, local authorities. I think, as I mentioned before, the the this the project is in an area where mining has been uh, quite an important industry for a long time and it's, it's had something of a hiatus um, uh, in in more recent years but there's a long and proud tradition of mining there and therefore there is a lot of sort of natural local support um, for a project of this nature that aims to bring um, you know mining back back to the area well, that's great. Thank you very much indeed. Um, what are the challenges to creating local supply in Europe and really how are you positioned compared to that of your peers? Well, I think bringing any mine on stream in Europe um, is is challenging. Um, there's a lot of scrutiny on, on uh, permitting and sort of social acceptability and the, the um, you know, the, you've, you've seen on, on some other projects in, in Europe that have been 
uh, some resistance from from local populations as to whether or not um, they want mining in the area. You know, as I mentioned before, this is an old mining area. There is acceptance um, of of mining. Uh, it's obviously beholden on us to make sure that we design a project that is as sensitive to to local uh, feeling and 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 uh, the environment, etc., as, as possible. But we're starting from a baseline of of um, you know of people wanting. Uh, a project here, which I think is gives us a, a significant advantage. Thank you. I've got a couple more pre-submitted questions, if I may, the first of which is as follows. Are there any other exploration licenses in the area that you could or would want to pick up? Look, we, we're always looking at that, but we have, um, you know, a substantial land position uh, already at the moment. We've got, um, you know, three main exploration licenses in addition to the Zinvolt mining license. So we, we have... Um, uh, the ground immediately surrounding uh, that mining license, um, so that gives us the you know the potential step out, uh, and then we also have have two others in in the area Zadersdorf, which we picked up um, about six months ago, uh, which you know has a historic chalk resource on it, and then Falkenhayn, which we've been doing the um, sort of review of of historic information on. So it was drilled historically um, for tin tungsten um, back in. Uh, uh, in, 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 the, in the sort of GDR time, uh, and we are uh, looking to test that historic work. So we've been, been going, we have that data, and we've been going through that data, um, and we will, uh, in the in the near term, one of our projects is to um, is to test some of that historic drilling uh, and see if it fits our uh, geological model, uh, and then from that will flow whether or not that that project can can uh, form an adjunct to um, to the to the core project, which you know we believe there's a, a good chance that it that it can. Thank you. And finally, uh, the final pre-submitted question is: shortage of shortage of experience seems to be a key risk for mining companies at the moment. Are you facing any of these issues? Not currently. Um, look, getting good personnel um, is is always a challenge. Um, you know what I would say uh, on this, um, Freiburg, which is you know. One of one of the cities very close to to the project area is, you know, has a large university. Uh, mining has always been a core discipline of of that university. So there is, you know, this is a university that generates uh, geologists and, and and mining engineers. So um, that that is very helpful uh, at at the stage we're at. We also, um, you know, have benefited from from help from 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 various academics uh, on on that. Um, then also. Germany is, is is really kind of the heart of the European chemical industry and, and lithium to, to produce a battery grade lithium product is as much a chemical process as it is a, a mining process. Um, so the fact that you know this really is the heart of the chemical industry means that you know there are industrial chemists uh, available who understand you know, industrial scale chemistry so that's helpful for us as well. That's great. Well, thank you very much. And thank you for those uh, questions. Um, if I may, Anton, just ask you to open up the uh, Q&A tab. You'll see you've received uh, quite a few questions from investors today. So if I could ask you to read out those questions and where appropriate to give a response, and then I'll pick up from you uh, at the end. So uh, can you explain why the project is focusing on battery grade lithium hydroxide? So um, in, in very broad brush terms, uh, the, the, the two core um, products in the lithium battery space are, are lithium carbonate and lithium hydroxide. Uh, lithium hydroxide is a key input into nickel-based battery chemistries. Um, so if you have a Tesla Model S or one of the new VW electric cars, those are those typically have uh, nickel-based battery cells in them. And the benefit of uh, nickel-based battery cells is they, they enjoy higher energy density and better cold weather performance. So Automakers in, in Europe have, have prioritized those attributes. Um, lithium carbonate uh, is used in is predominantly used in the um, uh, in the uh, iron-based chemistry. So they have some uh, advantages in terms of, of, of cost, but uh, they suffer a little bit on the on the energy density and the cold weather performance. So it's a, all of these things are a trade-off. But what um, what we're hearing and, 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 and what we're being told um, is that, that for Europe, it's the nickel-based chemistries that, that, that will be the sort of medium-term dominant, and therefore uh, pro providing lithium hydroxide is, is what the market wants. Um, 
it does enjoy a small price premium to to lithium carbonate although that moves around with time um but but that is we're effectively responding to market demand on on that um, uh, are there any potential synergies with a nearby Cinevec project um it's very seldom that you get uh, contiguous or, or close by projects where there wouldn't be a synergy um but uh you know as to what those are it would it would require a you know sort of very detailed study to say um what is the plan for the non-core assets we really have only one non-core asset which is the abbey town project in ireland um as zinc and lead prices have uh gone up uh, over the last 18 months we you know we still think that that's an attractive asset it's not something uh we as a management team want to devote time and energy on given all that we're trying to do uh on on lithium we think um, that would be a distraction we have done the necessary work to retain the core license there and drop the sort of outer lying licenses um, but we will seek to either partner that asset or or sell it if we if we can but it isn't the holding cost for that is is extremely low Uh, you mentioned other projects in Europe and your expectation for your own commercial delivery mid-decade. What is your view of the risk of being late to the market versus other Euro projects? I think all projects in Europe suffer from, um, you know, the same challenges, uh, suffer from and benefit from the same challenges and, 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 and kind of market demand outlook. So, um, you know, I don't think we have, you know, any especially more challenging um, uh, elements to the project all projects are different all have different advantages and disadvantages uh you know i think um you know anyone who tells you it's it's completely easy and plain sailing is is, is not telling you the, the the full truth these things will always be uh challenging but i think we're 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 well as well positioned as anyone and, and better than a lot uh do you see sodium ion battery technology becoming a threat to the lithium market I mean, one reads almost every day of, of new battery technologies coming and whether they will completely um, sort of overturn the industry and, and, and change demand. My answer to that is a lot of those are still in the lab, so they're a long way from being in vehicles or in, or in other applications. Um, and, you know, what you've seen is, is really billions of euros of committed investment into lithium-ion battery factories, uh, you know, around the world and, and in Europe in particular. And those are investment decisions make it made with, you know, fairly long timescales in mind. You know, the, the, the uh, CEOs of the companies making those investments are not making those on the basis that um, those are going to be redundant in, in you know, in less than 10 years or, or even probably 20 years. So I take quite a lot of comfort from that, that these are people who um, you know, are doing the research on other technologies and cells or certainly following the research on other technologies and cells, and they have made the decision to invest, uh, you know, substantial sums of money in, in lithium ion technology. So I think that underlies um, uh, lithium demand, uh, uh, you know, certainly for the, um, I'd say for the long term. Um, you know, you can never discount a, a sort of a new technology popping up, but I think, you know, just given where the investment's been that that doesn't seem likely in, in the very short term. Uh, based on existing data, are you able to give a very first overview of the project economics on expected IRR? Um, so obviously we, we, we're, we're shifting the nature of the project. Uh, we, we, we've, we've changed the, um, uh, the um, sort of end product uh, and we've just been through uh, you know, an extremely rigorous uh, test work program on that, which has given us a lot of the information we need in terms of kind of OPEX costs and CAPEX costs for, for that component. Um, we're still working through that. Um, uh, we're also looking at, as I mentioned, how we can pull production forward, so increase the production rate for the project. So these are all things that need to be looked at. And it's not, you can't look at them in isolation, you have to look at them in terms of the, of the overall of the overall project so you know obviously we, we internally have a have a view on on what that all means economically but in terms of sharing something 
uh, with you at this point, I think it's a little bit premature, but, but as soon as we can, we, we will. Okay, when, when do you expect to have a BFS completed? Um, so BFS, Bankable Feasibility Study, obviously a core document for, for any financing. Um, you know, again, as I mentioned, we're working as quickly as we, as we can on this. Um, I would say, you know, within um, sort of the next, uh, you know, our, our hope is that if, if, if things go well, we'd be able to do, uh, to, to come to a conclusion on that, you know, uh, in around, 18, 20 months, um, but obviously, you know, that, that's dependent on, on, on a number of factors. Anton, if I may just give you a few moments just to read, because for every question you answer, there seems to be a, another one that comes through. So just to give you a bit of time to select some of those questions, I'd like, just like to remind investors that, of course, we'll, we'll make all the Q&A available to you, along with a copy of the slides and the recording um, shortly, uh, a bit later on uh, this afternoon. So, um, Anton, please feel free to, to carry on. But of course, any questions that we don't manage to get through today, we can always uh, review post today's meeting. If I may, I'll just hand back to you if there's any other questions that you want to pick up. Sure. I think just looking through these, I think I've, I've, um, uh, I've answered most of them uh, that I can. Uh, well, well, perfect. Look, why don't we do this? If any further questions come in, Anton, obviously I'll make those available to you. Um, and thank you once again to everybody for their questions and for their engagement uh, this morning. Um, Anton, I know that uh, investor feedback will be particularly important to you and to the company, and I will shortly redirect investors to provide you with their thoughts and expectations. But before doing so, I wondered if I may just ask you just for a few closing comments, just to wrap up with, and then as I say, I'll redirect investors to give you their thoughts. Sure. Look, we are very excited about uh, the project we have here. Um, we've we've not owned it for a long period of time. We we first consolidated ownership um, uh, just over six months ago. Since then, we've been doing a deep technological dive into the project and seeing where we can optimize it. Uh, and then, having raised um, some money at the back end of last year, we're, we're pushing forward with those plans. So, um, you know, stay tuned. I think uh, we've got an exciting story ahead of us. That's great, Anton. Thank you very much indeed for your time today for, and for updating investors. Can I please ask investors not to close this session as we'll now automatically redirect you for the opportunity to provide your feedback in order that the management team can really better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete, but I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Zimbabwe Lithium, I'd like to thank you very much indeed for attending this morning's presentation. That now concludes today's session, so uh, good morning to you all.